Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So yesterday I put out a poll, there is still seven hours left on the poll, but I got excited, I wanted to see the results. Have you cashed out of your XRP yet? Slash, when will you? So only 4.6% said yes, but only a portion. Uh, only 3.2% said yes, most or all of it. And 36.1% of respondents said, no, I'm waiting for a price point of $5 to $10. While 56% of respondents said, no, I am waiting for over $50 per XRP. Interesting to see where people are with their XRP uh, holdings. Of course, the market's still looking fairly robust, even if XRP does correct. Uh, back down, you know, back down to the mid 40s, let's say, in this level of support here. That would still mean that we are making higher highs, guys, because let's face it, we just saw a parabolic move for XRP uh, and so like I mentioned even if we see XRP come down to you know even 50 cents 40 in, in this zone here somewhere in around here we are still making higher lows technically I know none of us want to see it dip uh, and that is you know that is a significant retracement it could happen so for those of you guys hodling I know you've got strong hands be wary it is not the end of the world if XRP does correct back to the mid 40s or even 50 cents per XRP I mean chances are if you are hodling through the bear market of 2018 2019 40 cents is still a delight DJ Peter Vass posted this on Twitter Ripple's former CEO transfers massive amounts of XRP guys this with regards to Chris Larson's account so approximately 6 million XRP has been moved in the last 24 hours. These transfers include Ripple's Chris Larson and some of the best crypto exchanges. Over the past 24 hours, more than 6 million XRP have moved between top cryptocurrency exchanges and Ripple's former CEO Chris Larson, according to the XRPL monitor. And it was also shared that 1.8 million XRP was transferred uh, by the Upbit exchange in the past few hours. So big movers in the space are moving lots and lots and lots of XRP. The whales, perhaps. Uh, Chris Larson has been uh, identified as being one of those movers and shakers so something to make note of this morning I did a video with regards to the uh, run-up for XRP and other cryptocurrencies and the possibility of us seeing uh, some real fundamentally meaningful cryptocurrency adoption on December 3rd. If you guys didn't catch that video, I'll link it up here in the top right hand corner for you. We've got more Ripple news with regards to Ripple Partner Securitize. So this from the Cryptic Poet here on Twitter. And so Ripple Partner Securitize receives regulatory approval for BD slash ATS acquisition. Securitize is the industry-leading primary issuance of compliance platform for digital securities or security tokens and an SEC registered transfer agent and they announced today that it has received regulatory approval to acquire distributed technology markets, uh, a FINRA registered broker dealer with an alternative trading platform ATS on file with the SEC. The entity which will be renamed Securitize Markets LLC Securitize Markets enables Securitize to offer a complete digital suite of services for from primary issuance through secondary trading. So Carlos Domingo, Securitize CEO and co-founder stated private markets represent a massive segment of the modern global economy, but we are behind when it comes to using technology to make issuing and trading more efficient, transparent and accessible. By integrating Securitize markets into our existing digital transfer agent platform and services, we can now offer a seamless digital solution for issuers and investors that dramatically improves the experience compared to the poorly digitized process that is being used today. So you notice these guys are completely uh, registered with FINRA, which is very, very important, especially when you're talking about the regulatory clarity that is coming down the pipe. Certain countries obviously have seen the regulatory clarity. We're still waiting for that in the USA. And Securitize, a Ripple partner, so uh, perhaps utilizing XRP in a real world situation could be closer than we think. Wanted to thank the Cryptic Poet for posting that. Uh, and here, guys, the Flare Networks tweeted this out. They are uh, linking up with Liquid Global, and uh, Liquid Global is is now going to be supporting the distribution of Flare's Spark token. So more of these exchanges coming on board every single day. Uh, not only that, I also saw this, guys, and this is a big one. Binance will support the Spark token as well. Uh, this brought to me by Martin Volk here on Twitter. Guys, if you're not following Martin Volk, give him a follow on Twitter. Uh, he tagged me in this, so Binance, yet another one, and this is a big one. Binance, one of the biggest cryptocurrency exchanges on planet Earth. They have finally announced that they will be supporting the Spark airdrop 
co-op program for XRP hodlers. So if you have a Binance account, you can do it through Binance or Liquid Exchange, and you can even do it on the Ledger Nano, guys. I did a video on that. I'll link it up here in the top right-hand corner, uh, the how to link your Ledger Nano S or X uh, so that you can claim Spark tokens with the XRP that you already hold. It's a great time to buy a Ledger too, guys. I have an affiliate link in the description. Uh, you can use it if you want. Don't have to use it though. Uh, they are offering a promotion right now up until November 30th. It is 40% off Ledger Nano S and X. So just wanted to mention that in case you guys wanted to grab one or two. You know, it's always great to have a backup. I have two personally. This guy's from the cryptic poet. Ascendo Banco chooses Ripple partner Neom to provide international money transfer capability. Ascendo Banco, Mexico's leading digital first challenger bank, focused on providing innovative digital banking solutions Solutions today announced that it has expanded its capabilities in international payments and remittances through a partnership with global fintech infrastructure platform Neom. The partnership further expands on uh, Ascendo's overseas money transfer capabilities, allowing its customers to send money to more markets overseas in real time. Uh, this move supports Neom's continued plans to utilize fintech tools to improve business efficiency and consumer experience in Latin America and follows several partnership announcements by Neom in Brazil, Costa Rica, Rica and El Salvador. So this is big for Ripple partner Neom. Ascendo's customers will be able to send through an app funds overseas to major corridors in Europe and Asia easily and at a lower FX rate than other banks. International transaction services from Mexico were slow and expensive. The partnership with Neom together with our unique digital platform makes us the first bank in Mexico to offer this type of operations to users easily and in real time. This coming from Javier Reyes de la Campa, CEO and president of the board of Ascendo Banco. So another Ripple partner, Neom, expanding its business opportunities with Ascendo Banco in Mexico to send cross-border payments. Of course, since they are a Ripple partner, chances are they're going to be leveraging XRP to make those cross-border transactions. And Ripple, you know, as soon as they hit the scene, they really did make waves. Uh, you know, maybe a little Ripple, uh, no pun intended, at first, uh, but now the splashes are getting bigger and bigger. And we can see this by what is happening with Swift. Did you guys see this? They finally admitted it. This from Ant1 on Twitter. Swift has finally admitted that their new strategy is a reaction to Ripple and Visa. So for many crypto enthusiasts, this is a battle between the future of cross-border payments and the dinosaur age. In the recent past, Ripple has already attacked its competitor several times. Uh, and I don't know if you guys remember Marcus Treacher harshly criticizing Swift over the ISO 20022 protocol. Well, apparently Jürgen Marstadt, Swift's German head, recently confirmed in an interview that uh, as the website reports, Swift wants to be more than a mere transmitter of financial news in the future. Over the next two years, the network plans to fundamentally renew its cross-border infrastructure for the processing of payments and securities transactions. Uh, to this end, Swift is developing a new platform to offer comprehensive transaction management. Uh, he went on to say that with this new strategy, Swift puts business transactions at the center of our offer offerings. When asked about the competition from fintechs such as Ripple and the credit card provider Visa who want to improve payment transactions, Marstat admitted in an interview that the initiative is a reaction to the current developments in the market. So he's gone on the record saying, you know, companies like Ripple and Visa for that matter, who is uh, technically Ripple enabled through their partnership with Earthport, that these guys have really changed the landscape and uh, kind of pushed us, right? It's the snowball effect. You got to be able to compete with your competitors. And so they have pushed push Swift to move in this direction. The banks want to continue to conduct their payment transactions efficiently and meet the expectations of the end customers. There is currently a whole range of initiatives in cooperation between banks, fintechs, and of course Swift. It is therefore our task as a banking network to respond to such challenges and develop new offers. We want to support our owners in holding their own against the competition. Very, very interesting uh, that they are finally coming out and saying, look, Ripple has been on their game and now we have to react to this. This coming from the head of Swift in Germany, Jürgen Marstadt. And more and more we hear about Ripple and XRP being this big player on this grand stage for cross-border payments. We see that the price is rallying, okay, for XRP. Let me just put it on the hourly here just to show you guys. All right, price is rallying for XRP. Of course, Bitcoin is the leader of the pack. Bitcoin's the one that's getting all the media attention. And on coin market cap, right? We have the biggest cryptocurrencies by market cap on coin market cap. Number one being Bitcoin, number two being Ethereum, number three being XRP followed by a few others, namely Bitcoin Cash, Chainlink, Litecoin, Cardano, Polkadot, so on and so forth. We even have Binance Coin down here at number 10. And yet, why don't we see XRP 
in the media. Well, this coming from Kevin Cage retweeting out Digital Asset Buy's tweet here. How on God's green earth does Yahoo Finance leave XRP out of this list after the last few days? Very obvious agenda here. And so he retweets out this screen grab, obviously of his television set, giving a list of cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Ethereum, and Binance Coin. Why would they choose these specific coins and leave XRP out of the list, especially since XRP is number three, the number three cryptocurrency by total market capitalization. They've included Bitcoin, Ethereum, of course, number one and two, Bitcoin Cash, number five. They've also left out Chainlink, suspiciously enough. Litecoin is on there. Binance Coin is on there at number 10. So why leave out XRP? Is there an agenda? Is it because XRP does not have the regulatory clarity right now? And when we see the regulatory clarity, will we see XRP in the mainstream or will they still dismiss it? Because it's not meant for retail investing. Has the media been told to keep quiet about XRP because it's supposed to be used for something else? A cryptocurrency that once fully regulated is going to be the oil to lubricate the financial system of the future. And when that demand rises, guys, the price will go much higher than it is today. That's just my opinion, but I wanna hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.